The history of paintings can be known from primitive rock paintings of Bhimbetka, Mirzapur and Panchmari. They were followed by the painted pottery of the Indus Valley civilization, but the real beginning of the art of painting began from the Gupta age. In the 3rd century AD, Vatsyayan in his book Kam Sutra enumerated about six main principles or limbs or shadang of paintings. They are variety of form, rupa bhed, proportion of the object or subject, pramanam, creation of luster and gleam with colors, bhav, immersion of emotions, lavanya yojanam, portrayal of likeliness of the subject, shadrishyam, mixing of colors to resemble the effects of modeling, varnika bhang. There are numerous references of art of painting in the Brahmanical and Buddhist literature. For example, the representation of the myths of lore on textiles is known as Lepya Chitra. References of the art of Lekhya Chitra can also be seen, which has line drawings and sketches. Other types are Dhuli Chitra, Pat Chitra, etc. The play Mudra Rakshas by Vishaktat also facilitated the reader by mentioning the name of various paintings or patas, which are important to understand the different style of paintings and to observe all the principles of paintings. Some of the styles were Chalk Pitak, Isolated Frame Drawings, Digal Pitak, Long Scrolls of Paintings, Yam Pitak, Isolated Paintings. Prehistoric Paintings The prehistoric paintings were generally executed on rocks and these rock engravings were called petroglyphs. The first set of prehistoric paintings were discovered in Bhimbetka caves in Madhya Pradesh. There are three major phases of prehistoric paintings. Upper Paleolithic period paintings, Mesolithic period paintings and Calcolithic period paintings. Upper Paleolithic period that is 40,000 to 10,000 BC. The walls of the rock shelter caves were made of quartzite hence using minerals for pigments. One of the most common mineral was ochre or geru mixed with lime and water. To widen the palette, different minerals were used to make colors like red, white, yellow and green which widened their palette. The white, dark red and green were used to depict large animals like bison, elephant, rhino, tigers, etc. For the human figurines, red was used for the hunters and the green mostly for dancers. Mesolithic period that is 10,000 to 4,000 BC. This period mainly saw the use of red color. In comparison to the upper Paleolithic period, the size of the paintings became smaller during this period. One of the most common scenes depicted in these paintings is of group hunting and several other paintings depict grazing activity and riding scenes. Calcolithic period This period saw an increase in the number of paintings using green and yellow color. Most of the paintings seen depict battle scenes. There are many paintings of men riding horses and elephants. Some of them even carry bow and arrow which might indicate preparedness for skirmishes. Paintings and samples of writings in the Ashokan and Gupta Brahmani scripts ascertain that these cave sites were inhabited in the late historical periods. The other set of paintings from this period are the Narsingad in Madhya Pradesh. They have paintings to show skins of spotted deer left for drying that provides credence to the theory that the art of tanning skins was perfected by man for providing shelter and clothing. Other paintings from this period also have depictions of musical instruments like the harp. Some of the paintings have complex geometrical shapes like the spiral, rhomboid and circle. Jogimara caves in the Ramgad hills in Surguja district of Chhattisgarh houses some of the paintings from the later period. These are dated to be painted around 1000 BC. Chhattisgarh is also home to the variety of caves in the district of Kanker like the shelter of Uduk, Garagodi, Kherkheda, Gotitola, Kulgaon, etc. These shelters depict the human figurines, animals, palm prints, bullock carts, etc. which show a higher and sedentary type of living. Similar paintings can be found in Ghodsar 
and Kohabor rock art sites in the district of Korea. Another interesting site is in Chitwa Dongri, Dur district, which a Chinese figure riding a donkey. Pictures of dragons and agricultural sceneries can be found. Several interesting rock paintings have also been found in Limdariha in Bastar district of Ugadi, Sitalekni in Surguja district in Odisha, Gudahandi rock shelter and Yogimat rock shelter are also prominent examples of early cave paintings. Let us have a detailed look on Bhimbetka rock paintings. It is located in south of Bhopal in Vidyan ranges of Madhya Pradesh. The rock shelters have more than 500 rock paintings. It was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2003. The oldest paintings are estimated to be 30,000 years old and have survived due to its location deep inside the caves. There is a marked continuity in the occupancy of caves from 1 lakh BC to 1000 AD with many paintings being painted on top of another. The paintings at Bhimbetka belong to Upper Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Calcolithic, Early Historic and even Medieval period. However, most of the paintings belong to the Mesolithic age. The paintings generally portray everyday life of prehistoric men often in stick-like human figures. Various animals like elephant, bison, deer, peacock and snake are depicted. The paintings also show hunting scenes and war scenes with men carrying weapons like bows, arrows, spears, shields and swords. Some paintings also have some geometric designs and symbols. The other themes of the paintings are dancing, playing music, animal fighting, honey collection, etc. Social life is well depicted with presence of children playing, women making food, community dancing, etc. Various colors like red ochre, purple, brown, white, yellow and green are used. Colors were obtained from natural resources, for example, hemite ores were used for red color. The work on the walls or a solid structure are referred to as murals. These have existed in India since ancient times and can be dated between 10th century BC and 10th century AD. The evidence of such paintings can be found at several locations in India. The beauty and the executeness of mural paintings can be seen in places like Ajanta, Arma Malai Cave, Ravan Chaya Rock Shelter, Bark Caves, Sittanavasal Caves and Kailash Temple in Ellora. Most of the mural paintings are either in natural caves or in rock cut chambers. The paintings follow a theme, the most common being Hindu, Buddhist and Jain. Apart from this, mural paintings were also made to adorn any mundane premise. An example of such a work can be seen in the ancient theatre room in Jogimara Caves. Ajanta Cave Paintings One of the oldest surviving murals of Indian subcontinent, Ajanta Caves were carved between 2nd century BC to 5th century AD out of volcanic rocks. It consists of a set of 29 caves carved in a horse shoe shape. These Buddhist caves are quite popular for their exquisite mural paintings. Murals in cave number 9 and 10 belong to the Shunga period while the rest belong to the Gupta period. The paintings in cave number 1 and 2 are the most recent of the caves in Ajanta. The walls of the caves have both murals and fresco paintings painted on wet plaster. They use tempera style, that is, use of pigments. The paintings portray human values and social fabric along with styles, costumes and ornaments of that period. The emotions are expressed through hand gestures. The unique feature of the paintings is that each female figure has a unique hairstyle. Even animals and birds are shown with emotions. The common themes of these paintings range from Jatak stories of life of Buddha to elaborate decorative patterns of flora and fauna. Graceful poses of humans and animals adorn the walls of the caves. The medium of painting was vegetable and mineral dyes. The outline of the figures is in red ochre 
with contours of brown, black or deep red. Some important paintings at Ajanta are scenes from the Jatak stories of the Buddha's former lives as a Bodhisattva, the life of Gautam Buddha, etc. Paintings of various Bodhisattvas in Tribhanga pose in cave number 1 are Vajrapani, the protector and guide, a symbol of Buddha's power, Manjushri, manifestation of Buddha's wisdom and Padmapani, Avlokiteshwar, symbol of Buddha's compassion. The Time Princess is in cave number 16, scene of Shibi Jatak where King Shibi offered his own flesh to save the pigeon, scene of Maitri Poshak Jatak where the ungrateful person saved by an elephant gives out his whereabouts to the king. Elora Cave Paintings The mural paintings at Elora Caves are found in five caves, mostly limited to cave number 16 that is Kailash Temple. These murals were done in two phases. The first phase paintings were done during the carvings of the caves while the second phase ones were done several centuries later. The earlier paintings show Vishnu with his consort Lakshmi born through the clouds by Garud, the celestial bird. The later paintings, made in Gujarati style, depict procession of Shev, the holy man. The paintings are related to all three religions, Buddhism, Jainism and Hinduism. Elara cave paintings are newer as compared to the Ajanta cave paintings. Some prominent Elora cave paintings are images of Goddess Lakshmi and Lord Vishnu, images of Lord Shiva with his followers, beautiful and gracious Apsaras. Bark cave paintings Representing an extension of the Ajanta school, Bark caves in Madhya Pradesh with their exquisite work rank quite close to the actual Ajanta caves in terms of their design, execution and decoration. The main difference is that the figures are more tightly modelled, have stronger outline and are more earthly and human. Cave number 4, known as Rang Mahal, has beautiful murals on the walls depicting Buddhist Jatak tales just like those in Ajanta. Although scanty and decayed now, these paintings depict religious themes in the light of contemporary lifestyle of people, thus are more secular in nature. Arma Malai Cave Paintings Situated in Vellore district of Tamil Nadu, these natural caves were converted into Jain temple in 8th century. Unbaked mud structures are located within the cave which acted like the place of rest for Jain saints. The beautiful colorful paintings on the walls and roof depict the tales of Ashtashtik Palakas, deities protecting eight corners and Jainism. Sitta Navasal Cave or Arivar Coil Paintings Dated from 1st century BC to 10th century AD and located in Tamil Nadu, these famous rock cut cave temples are known for the paintings based on Jainism. These murals have close resemblance to Bagh and Ajanta paintings. The paintings are not only on the walls but also on the ceiling and pillars. The paintings are with the theme of Jain Samav Sharan preaching hall. Some scholars believe that these caves belong to the Pallav period when King Mahindravarman I excavated the temple, while others attribute them to when Pandya ruler renovated the shrine in the 7th century. The medium used for painting was vegetable and mineral dyes and was done by putting colors on surface of thin wet lime plaster. The common colors included yellow, green, orange, blue, black and white. The central element of the paintings in Sittanavasal is a pond with lotuses. Flowers in this pond are collected by monks and there are ducks, swans, fishes and animals. A scene shows Samavsharan, an important scene of Jain religion. Samavsharan is a special beautiful audience hall where the Thankaras delivered sermons after they reached realization that is Kebal Gyan. Bulls, elephants, apsaras and gods gathered in this audience hall to witness this grand scene. Ravan Chaya Rock Shelter 
लोकेटेड इन द कोइंझा डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ उड़ीसा दीज एंशंट फ्रेस्को पेंटिंग्स ऑन अ रॉक शेल्टर आर इन द शेप ऑफ हाफ ओपन अम्ब्रेला इट इज बिलीव दैट दिस शेल्टर एक्टेड लाइक द रॉयल हंटिंग लॉज द मोस्ट नोटिसबल पेंटिंग इज दैट ऑफ अ रॉयल पोसेशन दैट डेट्स बैक टू सेवन सेंचुरी ए डी The remains of Chola period paintings belonging to 11th century are also of importance. Located in the Anandpur district of Andhra Pradesh, these mural paintings were executed on Virbhadra temple walls at Lipakshi in 16th century. Made during the Vijayanagar period, they follow a religious theme based on Ramayana, Mahabharat and incarnations of Vishnu. The paintings show a complete absence of primary colors, especially blue. They depict a decline in paintings in terms of quality. The forms, figures and details of their costumes are outlined with black color. Jogimara Cave Temples. It is an artificially carved out cave located in Surbuja district of Chhattisgarh. It is dated back around 1000 to 3000 BC and has few paintings and inscriptions of a love story in Brahmi script. The cave is said to be an attachment to amphitheater and the paintings were made to decorate the room. Paintings are of dancing couples of animals like elephant and fish. The paintings have a distinct red outline. Other colors like white, yellow and black were also used. Rock cut theater of Sita Banga is also located nearby. Murals at Badami Cave Temples Karnataka. Though the Badami Cave Temples are famous for its sculptures, there are beautiful paintings too. Murals and Badami caves having lost their original grandeur and charm still offer a glimpse into the artistic capabilities of people of that era. They are one of the earliest surviving Hindu paintings. The murals belonging to 6th 7th century AD are of different subjects and resemble the tradition of Ajanta and Bagh. The human subjects have a graceful and compassionate look in them and have big half closed eyes with protruding lips. Paintings of Chalukyan kings, Jain saints giving up worldly life, Shiva and Parvati, Puranic events and Dethisar depicted. Cave number 3 still is adorned with beautiful ancient mural showing four armed Brahma on his swan. The word miniature is derived from the latin word minium which means red lead paint this paint was often used in the illuminated manuscripts during the renaissance period it is generally confused with the word minimum which would mean that they were small in size miniatures are small and detailed paintings technique of miniature painting There are several preconditions that are necessary to be fulfilled for making a miniature painting. The painting should not be larger than 25 square inch. The subject of the painting would be painted in not more than 1/6 of the actual size. For example, an adult head of 9 inches would not be more than 1.5 inches. In most of the Indian miniature paintings the human figurine is seen with the side profile they usually have bulging eyes pointed nose and slim waist in the rajasthani miniatures the skin color of the characters is brown while in the mughal paintings they are generally fairer furthermore the color of divine beings like lord krishna is blue when women figurines have long hair and the color of their eyes and hair are generally black men wear traditional clothes and have a turban on their head early miniatures as discussed earlier miniature paintings were small paintings with minute details they were often painted for either books or albums on perishable material including paper palm leaves and cloth developed almost as a reaction to the enormous wall paintings the art of miniature painting developed between 8th and 12th centuries this kind of painting can be attributed to the eastern and western regions two prominent schools are pala school of art and apbranch school of art 
This school was flourishing during 750 to 1150 AD. These paintings are generally found as a part of manuscripts and were generally executed on palm leaf or vellum paper. There are lonely single figures in the paintings and one rarely finds group paintings. They have simple compositions and were patronized by some of those rulers who promoted Buddhism. The proponent of the Vajrayan school of Buddhism also used and patronized these paintings. The prominent painters were Dhiman and Vittapal. Upper branch school of art. This school traces its origin to Gujarat and Mewar region in Rajasthan. It was the predominant school of painting in Western India during 11th to 15th century. The most common themes of these paintings were Jain and in the later period the Vaishnav school appropriated them too. They brought in the concept of Geet Govind and secular love into these paintings that were otherwise dominated by the Jain iconography. Even though the paintings were made as illustrations for books they did not develop a different style but were mural paintings in a reduced dimension. The colors used in the paintings had symbolic meaning and they usually used red, yellow and ochre. In the later phase they used bright and gold colors. In the later phase they used bright and gold colors. Furthermore, the features of the human figures depicted in the paintings have fish-shaped bulging eyes, a pointed nose and a double chin. They tried to begin the trend to make angular faces in the third and fourth profile. The figures are usually stiff and even the ornamentation is carefully done. The female figurines have enlarged hips and breasts. The animal and bird figurines in the paintings are represented as toys. The most famous example is of Kalpa Sutra and the Kalakcharya Katha from 15th century. Transition period miniature. The coming of the Muslims in the Indian subcontinent was a harbinger of change and brought forth a cultural renaissance in the 14th century. One should not say that the Islamic styles took over as the traditional styles of paintings survived in the Western Indian courts and a cultural synthesis took place. In the southern states of Vijayanagar, a different style was emerging that was closer to the Deccan style of painting. Miniature Art During Delhi Sultanate These paintings tried to bring together the Persian elements of their origins with the Indian traditional elements. They gave preference to illustrated manuscripts and one of the finest examples from this period is the Nimat Nama, a book on cookery during the reign of Nasir Shah who ruled over Mandu. This script shows the synthesis of the indigenous and Persian styles. Apart from this, another style called Lodi Kuladar was also prevalent during the period that was followed in many of the sultan dominated regions between Delhi and Jaunpur. Later, three major styles emerged that dominated the medieval landscape – Mughal, Rajput and Deccan. Mughal era miniature painting The paintings made in the Mughal period had a distinctive style as they were drawings from Persian antecedents. There was a change in color palette, themes and forms. The focus shifted from depicting the god to glorifying the ruler and showing his life. They focused on hunting scenes, historical events and other court-related paintings. The Mughal paintings brought together Persian naturalistic style with the opulence of a great dynasty and created some beautifully illustrated folios. These paintings were considered unique because of the use of brilliant colors. They brought the technique of foreshortening to the Indian painters' reperture. Under this technique, objects were drawn in a way that they look closer and smaller than they really are. The styles of paintings under the successive rulers are early Mughal painters. Babur is said to have patronized the Persian artist Bezad who made some illustrations of the Mughal family tree. Humayu, who was a great patron of arts, came to the throne at a young age. He was interested 
in paintings and building beautiful monuments. While he was at Shah Thamsip's court in Persia, he acquired the services of two main painters called Abdus Samad and Mir Sayyid Ali, who came back with him after he won his throne back and established the Mughal dynasty in India. These artists were responsible for bringing Persian influence in the Mughal paintings and created many successful illustrated albums. During Akbar's reign, they created an illustrated manuscript called Tuti Nama, Tales of a Parrot. Akbar was responsible for establishment of an entire department devoted to the paintings and scribing of his documents. He established a formal artistic studio called the Sweer Khana where the artists were hired on salary and they developed their own styles. Akbar also recognized the beauty of those Indian artists who had worked for previous rulers and invited them to work in his Tasveer Khana. Hence, the Indian influence started in the Mughal paintings. The defining features of paintings in Akbar's period are the use of three-dimensional figures and the continued use of foreshortening. Furthermore, the artists encourage the use of calligraphy in the paintings. One of the distinguishing features of this period was the transformation of popular art to the court art. That is, the artist was more focused on depicting the scenes of court life than the life of the masses. Famous painters of this period include Dashwant, Basavan and Kesu. Prominent illustrated manuscripts during Akbar's reign are Tuti Nama, Hamza Nama, anwar e suheli and Gulistan of Saadi. The Mughal paintings reached its zenith in the period of Jahangir. He was a naturalist by nature and preferred the paintings of flora and fauna that is birds, animals, trees and flowers. He shifted from illustrated manuscripts to album and emphasized on bringing naturalism to portrait that is individual painting. One of the unique trends that developed in this period was the decorated margins around the paintings that was sometimes as elaborate as the paintings themselves. Jahangir was himself considered to be a good artist and he had his own private workshop although no major work by him survives. His atelier mostly created miniature paintings and the most famous amongst them were the naturalistic paintings of the zebra, the turkey and the cock. One of the most famous artists from his period was Ustad Mansur who was an expert in drawing the features of the most complex faces. An animal fable called Ayar e Danish, Touchstone of Knowledge was illustrated during his reign. The tenor of the Mughal paintings changed rapidly in the period of Shah Jahan. Unlike his father and grandfather who liked naturalistic depictions, Shah Jahan liked creating artificial elements in the paintings. It is said that he tried to reduce the liveliness of the paintings and bring in unnatural stillness as he was inspired by the European influence. He encouraged the artist to draw the sketch using a pencil. He also ordered to increase the use of gold and silver in the paintings. Hence, we can say that the Mughal atelier was enlarged during his reign but changed a lot in style and technique. Aurangzeb did not encourage painting as a result. Large number of Mughal court painters started migrating to the provincial courts in Rajasthan, etc. Hence, during the reign of Aurangzeb, there was a sharp decline in the activities of painting. Even though the medieval period was dominated by the Mughal style of painting, the different schools and styles that developed in this period were Rajasthani school of paintings and Pahari school of paintings. The Rajasthani school of painting is more or less synonymous to the Rajput school of paintings as they were the dominant ruling class in this period and patronized most of the artists. There are several subgenres of Rajasthani paintings which correspond to their princely state of origin. Mewar school of painting The kingdom of Mewar registered Mughal suzerainty for the longest time eventually agreeing to Mughal power in the reign of Shah Jahan. Mewar rulers seem to have patronized art even in times of adversity. 
though the years of relative peace and prosperity saw an extraordinary efflorescence if one looks at the early mewar painting it is realized that it was dominated by the extraordinary painter of 17th century sahibuddin this period of mewari painting focuses on sahibuddin's depiction of literary texts the ragmala the ramayana and the bhagavat puran after sahibuddin's death the style of mewari paintings changed most of the paintings depicted the life at court in mewar The unique point of this period is the extraordinary tamasha paintings that show court ceremonial and city views in unprecedented details. Ambedkar Jaipur School of Painting. The Ambedkar rulers were another dynasty that was closely associated with the Mughals. The Ambedkar school is also called the Dhundar school and their earliest evidences come from the wall paintings at Bharat in Rajasthan. Some paintings can also be seen from the palace walls and mausoleum of Amer Palace in Rajasthan even though some of the men folk are shown wearing Mughal style clothing and headgear the overall finish of the paintings is folk styled This school reached its pinnacle in the period of Savai Pratap Singh in the 18th century He was a deeply religious man and a passionate patron of art These two strains combined to ensure that his surat khana or the department of painting made miniatures to illustrate Bhagavat Puran, Ramayan, Ragmala and several portraits. Marwar School of Painting. It is one of the most extensive schools of painting as it includes Jodhpur and Bikaner both ruled by the Rathods and Jaisalmer that was ruled by the Bhatis. Like Bikaner, Jodhpur too was a desert kingdom that prospered through its close links with the Mughals. In the paintings produced in the 15th and 16th century, the men wore colorful clothing and so did the women. Kishangarh School of Painting, 17th and 18th century AD. Paintings at Kishangarh is associated with the most romantic legends, Samant Singh and his beloved Bani Thani. and intertwining of lives and myths romance and bhakti after surveying earlier developments in kishangarh the focus is on interplay between samant singh the prince and lover nagridas the poet and nihal chand the painter who created some of the most legendary paintings under the school in this period they followed the mughal patterns but after the 18th century the rajput element became predominant For example, there was an influx of paintings that contained linear rhythm coupled with bright colors. The Jodhpur atelier has many brilliant paintings, but the focus has always been on the extraordinary paintings in the times of Man Singh and after. He commissioned extensive series of paintings including the Shiv Puran, Nat Charitra, Durga Charitra, Panch Tantra, etc. Kishangarh School and Bundi School are the prominent schools that come under Marwar school. It is sometimes argued that the woman in Banithani is said to resemble the character of Radha. She has a distinctive profile and has lotus like elongated eyes, thin lips and a pointed chin. Her orni or headgear defines her side profile. This became the unique painting associated with the Kishangarh school. They also made many paintings on the devotional and amorous relations between Radha and Krishna. Bundi School of Painting. The twin kingdoms of Bundi and Kota are collectively known as Hadoti. The sister states formed by splitting the older Bundi kingdom between two brothers have closely intertwined histories and artistic traditions. Most of the focus is on the art of Kota, the younger of the two kingdoms and home to some remarkable art and some remarkably eccentric patterns bundi and kota's kings were devotees of krishna and in the 18th century they declared themselves to be mere regents ruling on behalf of the god who was the true king similar patterns of worship are seen in several other centers including udaipur and jaipur their krishna bhakti plays a role in painting or perhaps Painting plays a role in their Krishna bhakti. In Bundi school, paintings of local vegetation were in detail. Human faces were round 
and with pointed nose color of sky is painted in different colors and mostly a red ribbon is visible in the sky let us discuss the points of difference between the rajput style and the mughal style of paintings rajput style was initially based on mural and fresco forms in the later period the miniature painting form became dominant whereas the mughal style is based on the persian miniature painting style in the rajput style the themes are usually devotional or religious in nature whereas mughal style usually depicts the mughal emperor and his household the royal pomp and show the battles and the hunting scenes are also very popular the rajput style uses hindu symbols like the lotus peacock and swan very frequently whereas in the mughal style the peculiarity is on the person in the picture or on trees camels and falcons the rajput style developed during the 17th and 18th century where paintings majorly flourished whereas in the mughal style the paintings flourished during the 16th and the 18th century the pahadi school of painting this style of painting developed in the sub himalayan states also under the umbrella of mughal influence there were many schools that were flourishing in smaller rajput kingdoms which came under the blanket of pahari paintings these consisted ateliers in the court of around 22 princely states stretching from jammu to almora hence the pahari paintings can be grouped into two major groups basholi school and kangra school the themes of the paintings range from mythology to literature and brought new techniques to the fore a typical pahari painting would bring several figures into the canvas and they would all be full of movement each figure is different in composition color and pigmentation three of the greatest painters of this school were nainsuk manakku and sansarchan basholi school paintings of pahari school in 17th century were from basholi to of jammu and kashmir they were miniature paintings this was the early phase and expressive faces with a receding hairline and the big eyes that are shaped like lotus petals characterized it these paintings use a lot of primary colors that is red yellow and green they use the mughal technique of painting on clothing but developed their own styles and techniques the first patron of this school was raja kirpal pal who ordered the illustration of bhanu datta's rasmanjri geet govind and the ramayan drawings the most famous painter of this school was devidas who was famous for his depiction of radha krishna and the portrait of kings in their livery and in white garments the use of contrasting colors is associated with this school and they are borrowed from the malwa paintings kangra school after the decline of the mughal empire many artists trained in the mughal style migrated to the kangra region of himachal pradesh as they got patronage by rajput kingdom it led to the birth of guler kangra school of paintings it first evolved in guler then came to kangra this school reached its zenith under the patronage of raja sansarchan his paintings were marked with a sensuality and intelligence that the other schools lack the popular subjects were the geet gobind bhagwat puran satsai of bihari lal and nal damyanti love scenes of krishna was a very prominent theme all the paintings had an otherworldly feel about them Another very famous group of paintings is the 12 months where the artist tried to bring forth the effect of the 12 months of the emotions of human beings. This emotive style was popular till the 19th century. The Kangra school became the parent school to the other ateliers which developed in the region of Kullu, Chamba and Mandi. In Kangra, Sansar Chand Museum can be visited to see the prominent Kangra school of paintings. Ragmala paintings Ragmala paintings are a series of illustrative paintings from medieval India based on ragmala or the garland of ragas depicting various Indian musical ragas they stand as a classical example of the amalgamation of art poetry and classical music in medieval India ragmala paintings were created in most Indian schools of painting 
starting in the 16th and 17th centuries and are today named accordingly as pahadi ragmala rajasthan or rajput ragmala deccan ragmala and mughal ragmala in these paintings each raga is personified by a color describing the story of a hero and heroine nayak and nayika in a particular mood it also elucidates the season and the time of day and night in which a particular raga is to be sung moreover many paintings also demarcate the specific hindu deities attached with the raga like bhairav or bhairavi to shiva shri to devi etc the six principal ragas present in the ragmala are bhairav deepak shri malkosh megha and hindola ganjifa is medieval period card game These cards were traditionally hand painted by artisans and were very popular in Mughal courts. The cards have colored background with each suit having different color. The reference of Ganjifa cards can even be found in the book Babar Nama. Mysore Ganjifa cards or paintings have received the GI status from Government of India in 2008. The trend of making miniature paintings was already prevalent in south india and it developed in the early medieval period there were different form of north indian schools owing to the heavy use of gold in south indian paintings furthermore they concentrated on painting divine creatures much more than painting the rulers who patronized them some of the major schools are tanjur paintings famous for gold coating the tanjavur or tanjur school is famous for the special style of decorative paintings it was probably the result of the defeat of tanjavur nayakas by marathas and the fall of vijayanagar empire the maratha rulers immensely patronized them during the 18th century these paintings are unique as they are mostly created on glass and wooden planks instead of cloth and vellum as preferred in northern india They are unique because of the use of brilliant color patterns and the liberal use of gold leaf. It has been recognized as geographical indication by government of India. They used many types of gemstones and cut glasses for embellishments to create larger than life images. Most of the paintings depict smiling Krishna in various poses and various major events in his life these paintings reached their zenith under the patronage of maharaja sarfozi ii of maratha dynasty who was a great patron of art currently this school is still operational but they have moved towards experimenting with diverse subjects like birds animals buildings etc mysore paintings these paintings were patronized by the rulers of the mysore province and continued in the british period too the major theme of the mysore paintings is the depiction of hindu gods and goddesses the unique part of these paintings is that they had two or more figures in each painting and one figure predominates all the others in size and color furthermore even the technique of making these paintings is very different from the north indian styles they use the gesso paste which is a mixture of white lead powder gumbos and glue this gives a particular base to the painting that develops sheen on the background they counter it with the use of muted colors and are not so bright so as to counteract the background both tanjore and mysore paintings have originated from the same source vijayanagar paintings to begin with and their nayaka paintings subsequently paintings in modern india in the colonial period a hybrid style of painting emerged that combined the elements of rajput mughal and other indian styles with european elements these paintings evolved when the british company officers employed painters who had been trained in indian styles hence they mixed their employers european tastes with their indian training and were called the company paintings they were distinguished by the use of watercolor and in technique by the appearance of linear perspective and shading this style of painting originated in kolkata chennai delhi patna 
Varanasi and Tanjavur. Mary Impey and Wellesley patronized large number of painters. Several painters were engaged in painting the exotic flora and fauna of India. The most famous painters of this school were Mazhar Ali Khan and Gulam Ali Khan. These genre of paintings were prevalent till the 20th century. Bazaar Paintings This school was also influenced by the European encounter in India. They were different from the company paintings as that school mixed European techniques and themes with Indian ones. The Bazaar School did not take any influence but took the Roman and Greek influence. They made the painters to copy the Greek and Roman statues. This school was prevalent in Bengal and Bihar region. Apart from the Greco-Roman heritage, they made paintings on everyday bazaar that showed Indian bazaars with European background. One of the most famous genres was depiction of Indian courtesans dancing before the British officials. They also painted religious themes but the figures of Indian gods and goddesses with more than two axes and elephant faces like that of Lord Ganesha were prohibited as they deviated from the European notion of natural human figurine. Raja Ravi Verma Raja Ravi Verma is one of India's greatest painters. He is considered to be the originator of the school of modern painting. The school was called modern because of the heavy influence of western techniques and themes. He was unique as he brought together elements of South Indian painting with the western techniques of color and style. He belonged to the state of Kerala and is known as the father of modern Indian art. Some of his extremely famous works include Ladies in the Moonlight, Shakuntala, Damyanti and Swan. He gained nationwide recognition for his paintings from the epic Ramayana, especially the one titled Raman Kidnapping Sita and Killing Jatayu. A film has been made on him named Rangrasya. Bengal School of Art the Bengal school is supposed to have a reactionary approach to the existing styles of paintings. This school is unique as they use simple colors. The idea of the Bengal school came up with the works of Abnindranath Tagore in early 20th century. His Arabian Night series made a mark on a global scale as it was path-breaking from the previous schools of Indian painting and brought in something new. He tried to incorporate Swadeshi values in Indian art and tried to reduce the influence of Western materialistic style among artists. He is known for his painting Bharat Mata and various Mughal themed paintings. The other notable painter of this school was Nan Lal Bose whose works led to further development of modern Indian art. He was also associated with Shanti Niketan. He is known for the white on black Gandhi sketch of the Dandi March which became iconic during 1930s. He was also entrusted with the task of illuminating the original document of the constitution of India. Another most famous painter of this school was Rabindranath Tagore. His paintings were unique as they used dominant black lines that made the subject look prominent. He made small sized paintings. Some art historians argue that his paintings can be linked to his writings. Other famous painters of Bengal school are Asit Kumar Haldar, Manishi Day, Mukul Day, Sunaini Devi, etc. Cubist style of painting in India The Cubist movement of painting took its inspiration from the European Cubist movement. Under this style, the objects were broken, analyzed and then reassembled. The artist reconstructed this process on the canvas through the use of abstract art forms. They tried achieving the perfect balance between line and color. One of the most popular Cubist artists in India was M. F. Hussain. In the paintings that use abstract connotations, he used the motive of a horse frequently as it was best to depict the fluidity of motion. Progressive Artist Group Post-1947, another group of painters grabbed the attention of the art world by their use of progressive and bold themes. They amalgamated these themes with softer and more abstract themes. They lacked any uniformity among themselves but were inspired by European modernism. 
This group was formed by six founding members F. N. Souza, S. H. Raza, M. F. Hussain, K. H. Ara, H. A. Gade, and S. K. Bakre. If you want to know anything else in history, please leave it in the comment box. We will come back with it. Those who have left the topics in the comment box, we are working on it and will soon come back with it. Thank you.